and welcome back. So if you had just caught my Magnus Prime review, you would see that even though I'm pretty happy with this figure, he is not perfect as far as what I want as a Power Master Optimus Prime. So thanks to Perfect Effect, we have new parts to rectify that. The first one being PC-15 and the next one being PC-16, and they both do things to alter this figure to improve him to making him closer to the Super Jinrai or Power Master Optimus Prime that we want. Now, the first thing you would know, this figure does not have a transforming cab. He is simply a truck that turns into this super mode. There is no regular Optimus Prime that snaps inside, which is a disappointment. He also has this Titan Master gimmick, while not bad, doesn't look super great because you have these hollow eyes. So what we're going to do first, we're going to use the PC-15 and we're going to modify this guy to where he has a new head and he's going to have a God Master to go inside his, inside his chest. So PC-15, what we start, out, start off with here is we have some thigh fillers. Uh, that's because we have sort of these gaps on the inside here. And all these do is they simply snap in and you get a little bit solid, more, solid looking of a figure. You don't see those mold gaps. And it's a simple enough adjustment to where you can make a huge improvement really quick. And, uh, it, you know, it's minor, but I think it does a lot for it. It makes it, makes it look uh, less of a low-end toy because you have sort of these, these left-open mold areas and brings it to a little higher-end range. Um, next, see if we can keep him stable, because like I said in the previous video, He's a little tricky to keep stable, so we're going to try to avoid him falling over while we do this video. The next bit we have here is the head. So we're going to pop that down. And what you can see here is where this guy has this sort of hollow eyes because it has the Titan Master behind there. This one has lights that light up. And he looks sort of like the images you might have seen from the anime, which is pretty sharp. The head is close. I don't think it's identical, though. It's, it's got enough different details on it where it's its own unique thing. Now, as far as the battery installation goes, uh, make sure you reference the manual because there's no plus and minus signs printed uh, inside the head. So you have to look at the picture just to make sure you're putting it in right. But to do that, all we're going to do, we're going to take off the Titan Master, open up the chest, and this part simply slides out. Right, there we go. So you can see here this mushroom peg on the bottom of this. So you just take it there, very easily slides forward. Take the new head, put a little bit of pressure on the, there's actually a little grip right here. So you can hold it and bam. Make sure you line the nose up. And man, that was an easy mod. And we'll turn the eyes on. That is so much better. I mean, this is such a simple adjustment. Uh, the head looks sharper, looks more anime accurate. Those legs look a little bit better, a little bit beefier. Um, really, really does accent the figure with these simple mods. Then next, we have our high Q, uh, or as they're calling him, Jinrai. He is a neat little figure. If you look really close here, Nicely painted face, great molded details, very small, very thin. If I show you guys next to the Titan Master, it gives you an idea. He's a lot more articulated uh, and a lot sharper looking, even a little bit smaller in some areas. However, keep that in mind, it is a very delicate figure. Where if you had the G1 version, which I have right here, even though it's not as articulated, not even as detailed, it is so much simpler to transform and put into function. This, you're going to pop things off of. The, the joints are stiff, especially on the legs. The ball joints are tight. So you're going to pop things off. And my concern with this is you might see a little bit of stressing. Uh, the only thing I've noticed so far is the peg that holds in the bottom leg. It doesn't seem to pop like it used to. Uh, and I mean, I've only transformed it once. So it's a delicate figure. And that's something that's a little bit unfortunate that you're going to 
really not want to convert him a whole lot. Um, I just think for the long term of it, he's going to go in there and get snapped in. You might pop him out on occasion. But yeah, it's not something you're going to put into a whole lot of use. But to transform him, the hips move forward. So he actually has kind of a seating pose. You move the thighs outward. Rotate the knees. And I'm holding the hips. See, even, even holding it like that, it pops off. These ball joints are just too tight. And you got to be careful when you put them back together so you don't pop anything else out. So try to get him rotated. Okay, so we've got that up there. And then there's a peg on the bottom of the ankle and the shoulder that kind of snap together. So you've got that. And like I said, this is, it's not a pretty transformation. Uh, th that side's a little bit better. You get the arm just right. I'm trying to keep this guy in view. He's kind of small versus my hands. All right. And then what we can do is pop open the chest. And he actually will sit inside there. And there we go. So he's sort of like a power master mode. Close him back up. And bam. There we sort of have our improved Magnus Prime with a Power Master function. That is not the Power Master Optimus Prime that we wanted. So we have this guy. And this guy is awesome. Now, as far as head sculpts go, try to zoom in on this guy. You can see that the actual head sculpt is different. And in my opinion, this is actually one of the best Optimus Prime head sculpts I've seen to date. I won't say it's the best, but it is it is a sharp head sculpt. So what does he come with? He comes with this nice G1 looking blaster, very reminiscent of the original Optimus Prime. He's got jazz hands. And these hands are really only good for one purpose, and that's when he's kind of jumping into super mode. Uh, other than that, I do find them to be a little silly. I would have rather they added individually posable fingers or something uh, to get a little bit more use out of them. They're just a little bit too expressive, and I think they, they are kind of limited on their use. They do have a rather nice hand sculpt here, though, even though the peg hole is a little bit large for that version. And then we also have a new chest cover, and what this will do is allow room for Q to sit in here and allow it to, to work over the armor. So about this guy, he's actually pretty stiff. He's very light, and he's pretty stiff. The, the neck has got full posability, two joints in the shoulders, one that rotates like that, and then a ball joint, elbow joint, rotation at the elbow, hand rotation, a hand moves up like that, waist articulation, ab crunch, which was very unexpected, Hip articulation, full rotation, swivel, knee joint, pretty good knee joint, and then toe articulation, so you can get some nice dynamic pose with that. And this guy, you know, it, it, the shoulders at first glance might seem a little bit off to me, but man, these shoulders are really, he, he's got so much character. There's something so neat about him. Uh, and before we really mess with the transformation, I want to do some comparisons. They really captured the essence of the Power Master Optimus Prime base figure. You do have these sort of funky looking arms. I mean, they, they really mimicked that as far as the, the overall look. You've got the little, the little grills. Instead of having the uh, hinges here, you've got the smokestacks, which I think was an interesting addition. Uh, the smokestacks aren't that far off, they're actually on the inside here, so it's not a huge leap, but it's similar enough to where it's still pretty interesting. Now, they do have different graphics here, though the, the crotch piece is still pretty close, but it all looks very similar. It all is very reminiscent. And I think they really captured the spirit of this figure brilliantly. Um, even as a robot mode, if I did not use this in combined mode, this guy stands on his own. I mean, he's really solid on first glance. So where this was the update of the original Optimus Prime, let's compare him to what we have as our 
replacement of, of G1 Optus Prime, the Classics Prime. So when we look at these two, we can see there's not a whole lot of size difference between them. There is a little bit more bulk on the Classic version, but they did not lose a whole lot of mass considering they have to go with such a smaller vehicle mode. They did do a pretty sharp, interesting take on it. And I could see this guy even being considered a Classic Prime by some. Uh, though, I think I would prefer to keep this guy as my Classic and sort of, of course, keep him as my Power Master uh, modernized version. And of course, to give you guys uh, a further idea of scale, here is the Titan Master Orion Pax. So you can sort of have those two together. Now, it might have been interesting to have him be a Titan Master as well, which, you know, could have been ideal had they put a neck piece in there and allowed you to use the head that was originally meant for the Power Master body. However, I'm okay with what it is. It doesn't have to have everything be Titan Master gimmick added into it. Of course, that was one of the complaints with having the Super Mode be a Titan Master, and one of the reasons we dropped it, because it's an improvement to go without. And to sort of get the whole spectrum here, here he is with the Mike Toys Thunder Manus. And he is a bit smaller. And it would actually be, I mean, Thunder Manus, as far as figures go, is one of the best Chug style Optimus Primes ever made. And it would actually be pretty interesting if they had revised it, shrunk it down a little bit, and made it to where it would work in the Super Armor. That actually could make its own cool toy. However, they're making their own Power Master Optimus Prime. There wouldn't be a lot of reason for that. Though it would be a pretty cool design had someone attempted that. So yes, I am happy with this guy's robot mode. Now before we move on to the transformation, I want to talk about a few features that this guy has. Of course, we've talked about the posability, which you can see how dynamic he is. We put on one of the expressive hands here. Now this hand, you know, like I said, I wish I had posable fingers or at least some other hands on top of this, but that's what we got. So with that, the blaster looks nice here. But as you see here, now this stand does not come with this. However, there is a port on the back that fits Figma stands. So these Figma stands you can find at your local comic store. They're pretty easy to find and they definitely work well for this figure, especially if you want to do some really crazy poses or have him jumping into his armor, anything like that. So yeah, I just want to show that real quick. I think it's pretty cool how they've kind of thought that into this to give this even more playability as far as the figure. And of course, him being so light, it makes it really easy to put him on these stands without having to worry about him falling. We'll start now getting him transformed into truck mode. And what we have here, I went ahead and put the hand, the normal hand back, and we'll start with the legs. And on the back here, we have these great panels that cover up the back calves, so we don't have these whole areas. And the transformation is reminiscent of Combiner Wars and Titan's Return. See, this little accordion joint down here allows the legs to collapse. And then, of course, this, instead of having to see the back of the, the thigh, this will snap in, and it covers it up. We lower the foot, same on the other side. Collapse a leg, and then these will snap into place once everything's nice and flush. And so from there, okay, so from there, snap the legs together. The next portion we'll do, uh, I think it's probably best to, do, to look at the cab. So we've got the cab here, and you can see what's going to happen is these arms are actually going to hide the head. So this comes down, there's a little piece of key that's on the shoulder here that will walk in. Same for the other side. Walks the cab in. That way you kind of know you have it in the right position. And the arms here, so we'll turn them out, move the hands in, and Sort of what you want to do, this is the part that's a little bit tricky, is you'll want to, as you'll notice on the cab here, there's also a set of keys here. They'll go into a, pet, a hole on the forearms. And it's not as smooth as you would like for a transformation sequence when you're just used to the G1 Power Master Optimus Prime, but it does work pretty well. So as you see here, it all locks in. The problem is, it's actually quite difficult to get that part flush. You're going to have a gap in the bumper there. And you sort of have to make sure the arms and everything are as flush as you can so that that lays as flat as it will. Next, what we're going to do, so you, we have this ab crunch here. So what we want to do is grab the red plastic and unlock it from the top of the cab. Then what we can do 
is you just rotate, reminiscent of the Titan's Return design, and then the lower part will lock into the bottom of the cab, and we've got that part there. So all that's left is we have these pieces here. And sort of the trick for that is you want to make sure everything is flat because it is such a tight tolerance that if you don't have everything, uh, all four of the, or all six of the wheels lined up, it actually won't really lock in. And there you go. You can see how the key on that goes into the fuel tank. And there we have our truck mode. Let's take the super mode and take them apart so that it can work. So I've already pulled off the front piece. And a, the, a word about that, if you look here on the front piece, there is no back section here, so you just pull forward. So you just wanna make sure you pull slowly and firmly at the base, and that part will come forward. And we sort of have our super mode here. And the other part we have to do is there's a screw back here. And that screw is what holds this truck mode on. So simply, get yourself a good screwdriver, Pull out that screw and the retainer, and now we simply can fold up that, and the truck comes off. So let's set our, our armor aside, and let's compare our truck modes, and get a real idea of the differences between the two. So both sets have nicely painted wheels. I do think the detail added to the Takara version of the wheels is a little bit nicer because you have lug nuts in there. You have all the little spaces and stuff you'd accept to, expect to see in real wheels. The rear section where the fifth wheel is, where the legs turn into the back of the truck, that's actually done nicer on the Perfect Effect version as it follows the lines more realistically of a real semi-truck. You even have sort of even the, the covers here for wheel. Uh, the shape all suits it where this has a lot of holes and hollow plastic and awkward shapes. This one does a little bit better. So then if we look at the other part of it, here's probably the biggest issue you might find with the look, and that's the fact that there is a semi-truck on the back of it. Where you had the original, it actually sort of hid that with the arms. So we do have a limited set of transformation that hides things, when you have it attached to the trailer, it shouldn't be as much of a problem. So we've got that. The other issue, not just the windows in the back, but these windows back here. Um, that's a little strange. I don't know why a semi-truck would have windows in the sleeper. Uh, something I've never seen before. It's an interesting design. Not terrible. It's just interesting and different. We've gotten so used to getting Optimus Primes where he doesn't even have barely enough of a window on the door. Uh, we're now we're having excessive windows. And then looking from the front, both very sharp, actually both pretty similar. I would say that, uh, pop this out here, that this is actually more reminiscent of the Power Master version where they had the, the painted uh, headlights and the bumper, and this is more reminiscent of the actual Takara version where this was all one single piece when they revised the design. Grill-wise, I'm pretty neutral on both. I think they look pretty good either way. Uh, I do think it's a good truck. I think the only other issue that jumps out at me, uh, one would be this ball joint. It's a little unfortunate. I think maybe using a silver injected plastic rather than a gray maybe could have helped it. I don't know if there's a whole lot you could do with that. One of those things you got to live with. The blue on the bumpers, I know it looks better in robot mode because you have to have the blue arms on the other side. That sounds a little bit on the truck mode, but this one... This one, I don't understand why they went with the blue plastic on the roof. I mean, that probably should have been red. I think that would have been a much better improvement. But, even with the issues aside, very cool robot mode. I would say almost equally good truck mode. I mean, even though both of these trucks have six wheels versus the four, I think truck mode is pretty good uh, compared to the version that we've gotten. 
I think it's sharp enough, good details. The bumper gap's a little bit off-putting, as well as a couple of the things that stand out. However, I don't think that knocks it bad enough for what the ultimate mode of this is. So what we're going to do next, we're going to put this guy in here the way he needs to be. So we're going to open this up like we did before. And just be careful because you don't want to do any scraping. Rotate the grill. And then while we're in here, actually, let's go ahead and pop this up and install. I already pulled the head out of the other cab and installed it here. Now, they did find you can actually use the Titan's return head in here and do some adjusting and fit it in there. I'm not going to bother with that because honestly, I just don't care for the head. And I think that if you're going to go, if you're going to go through trouble getting this, you might as well go all the way and get all the good parts that go with it. So anyway, we'll put in our new grill. Pick that in there. Pick that in there. And keep in mind, just like this version, all the plastic on this upper area is very thin, very delicate. So you can see here the old versus new. It's missing the arm, the uh, motor in the middle, and it's actually got red down here. But ultimately, it's it's pretty similar. And what it's for is so that the chest piece can fit in there. So what we'll do, it's the same deal. There's no material on the back here. So we'll just come to the back here, press it in. So now that's installed. And this will install the same way. And the, the part here that was originally screwed in is now the new fifth wheel. And that's where the secondary hole is. So now we can snap him down there. All right, let's all get let's get Haikyuu in there. Then we can fold this up, and it connects the same way as before. And bam. There is our new PowerMaster Optimus Prime. And I think, other than a little bit of ankle stability, which is just, it's going to be a problem with this, this figure no matter what you do. Now with everything combined with Magnus Prime, or as we like to call him, Power Master Optimus Prime, or Super Jinrai, here is my final verdict. I think the robot mode of Perfect Effects PC-16 is excellent. I think the head sculpt's great, I think the robot posability is great, all the little features built in are great. I think that's wonderful. Transformation is somewhat clever. The truck mode has some faults though. Uh, that gap in the bumper, I'm afraid it's going to get worse with time. And that's really not forgivable. Sadly, you know, I've been collecting Perfect Effect stuff for quite a while, and they've always been top-notch. I do think that should have been thought out a little bit better, and I'm going to have to come up with some sort of adjustment for that, just for my own sake if I display this in truck mode. Now, that being said, the set itself, the PC-16, I think is worth it. Now, when it comes to the PC-15, I think the head is great, it's an improvement. However, I think the same blue that's used on... Jinrai's eyes should have been used on it instead of the light-up feature. I think the thigh add-on's great. I think the Power Master, for what it is, is not bad. For its scale, it's pretty good. It is a little too fragile, though. It is a little too flimsy for, for what you're getting uh, for the price. But altogether, they do make this armor a great set. But when you're into this, some of us are going to be looking at spending $200 for this figure, and when you look at the whole sum of it, probably the biggest flaw is the actual... Takara Hasbro armor itself, and that's largely due to the legs. The feet are unstable enough to where it's really kind of tricky to get this guy into great poses, and I, I did make enough adjustments on mine where I don't think he's going to be a shelf diver, but that is something that we all have to consider. So when you look at the total cost of entry for this guy and for what you're getting, it is a great figure. Will it be my end-all, be-all Power Master Optimus Prime? For now, yes. 
as far as a modern one interpretation goes. I mean, when you put him next to the original here, he looks like a great updated version. It's very solid looking. It's got a neat aesthetic. The feet grow on you, especially in person. Not very photogenic, but once you see him in person kind of handle with them, it's not a bad looking design. It's just the stability is the biggest problem of it. But just talking about the PC 16 and 15 sets alone, if this is what you want to be your Power Master Optimus Prime, I think they are a worthy investment. Now, as far as I'm concerned, I am happy with the set. I personally would probably rate everything combined 8 out of 10, and I would probably give the perfect effect parts themselves also an 8 out of 10. And that's largely due to the, the flaws uh, with, the, with the truck mode, as well as some other things it could have been included for the price point. Uh, because when you start considering how much this set cost for both 15 and 16, you start looking into a little bit higher end sets of third party stuff. And I expect just a hair bit more as far as what we got in the sets. So let us know below if this is worthy of your collection, or if you're going to be holding out for one of the third party offerings for your modern interpretation of your Power Master Optimus Prime. And as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you all next time.